Nigel, welcome to the Tech Connect. Um, we've got 41 people watching along, so I will keep this intro short. Nigel from Bluefruit, taken to the stage. It's over to you. Okay, thank you. So, hi, I'm Nigel. I'm a senior developer at uh, Bluefruit and working on the AI team. Give me one second. Okay. Right, off we go. So, at Bluefruit, uh, we do provide a variety of software services, but basically, our core ethos centers around producing high quality embedded solutions. Um, we're very strong believers in using BDD and TDD along with Lean Agile. And we've been developing software for about 20 years down here in Cornwall, and there's now over 70 of us. Uh, we work in a wide variety of sectors. Uh, we all have one thing in common, that people there are looking for software with a very high quality and reliability. I can't tell you a lot about who we're currently working with, but here are a few of the clients we've worked with in the past. But I want to give you a little bit of a talk today about Bluefruit's journey into AI. Um, a little over 12 months ago, we knew absolutely nothing about it. Um, we had been involved in integrating AI functionality, which other people had produced into customers' products. But we wanted to learn for ourselves how to start building neural networks. And we we're particularly interested in Edge AI. Um, Thomas from Sequoia told you a fair bit about that, so I won't repeat what he said. Essentially, it's embedding the AI into a local device rather than sending it off to the cloud for processing. So, a little bit over a year ago, our MD, Paul, told my team, essentially, go forth and learn AI. Uh, we were between projects at the time. Um, so we didn't really know where to start. So started with Google, found there's a lot of uh, useful online resources there now. We created our own in-house project to get us started and to sort of center our learning. And a little further down the road, we received some grant funding from Aerospace Cornwall, which allowed us to uh, develop our AI research quite a bit further. What have we achieved over the past year? Well, I'll say a bit more about these first two in a minute. We put together a marketing demonstrator and we've done some research, which has resulted in us applying for patents. We also uh, worked with a company who were interested in putting an embedded AI on a wearable device. And we've also had a lot of interest from both our existing co customers and potential new clients about the idea of embedding uh, AI into their existing products. Uh, so much so, in fact, that in anticipation of this demand, we've also put together an in-house AI training course so that we can bring some of our other teams up to speed in AI to hopefully meet with uh, that demand. So that first one, the ACE Marketing Demonstrator. ACEs stands for Audio Categorization Equipment. And this was something we did to focus our learning in AI, but also produce something useful that the marketing department could show to people without infringing on any of our non-disclosure agreements to say, you know, this is what AI could look like, this is what it could do, and so on. Um, initially, it recognized common sounds like dog barks, door knocks, etc. Um, it's been through various versions. I'm going to show you a video in a second where it detects a block vacuum cleaner. It basically runs on a Raspberry Pi 4 with a touch screen, which, though not strictly an embedded device, it's quite a small, lightweight platform, and it's got plenty of processing power to handle. Uh, most smallish AI models. So I'll just play this video briefly for you. 
Hello and welcome. This is Andy here from Lufrit Software, and this is a demonstration of our innovative new AI offering, the Audio Classifier Equipment, or ACE for short. ACE is a prototype audio monitoring system consisting of an internet enabled Raspberry Pi and external microphone, all powered by our bespoke AI diagnostics and categorizing software. In this demonstration, we'll see ACE monitoring in real time. Changes in the vacuum motor, as well as flow through the nozzle, are recognized and then displayed here along with a level of confidence. Here we see the vacuum running and ACE has categorized the flow state as normal nozzle. When we block the nozzle, the AI is able to categorize the audio as blocked nozzle. As we unblock the nozzle, the categorization returns to normal nozzle, all in real time. ACE records the audio input from the mic as a rolling 5 second waveform. This waveform is then converted into a visual image of the audio called a spectrogram, which the AI can analyze more efficiently. In the spectrogram, the x-axis is time, the y-axis frequency, and brightness is volume. Every second, ACE feeds the spectrogram into a neural net, which consists of thousands of mathematical filters and analyzes the data. The result of this analysis is a probability rating against known trained categories. ACE is easy to train. Audio is captured with the target device in different states and then manually categorized. The more samples of a given state, the better the accuracy of the AI. So, to recap on Blue. Okay, I'll end that there. Um, the second thing which I was going to talk about is uh, this idea of sensorless measurements. Uh, we had a device which was being driven by a brushless DC motor. And the thing about BLDC motors is they actually need an awful lot of data in order to just make them go round. So you have to measure things like coil currents and voltages and the motor angle. And from that you have to then calculate current and voltage vectors relative to the rotor and so on. So we thought, how about we take all of that and feed it through an AI? And we discovered that uh, we could then infer things from that, such as torque, speed, pressure, even wear monitoring on the thing which is connected to the motor itself. And as a result of this research, as I mentioned, we've made a patent application at the start of this year, and we've just received a large order from an existing client to start looking at how we might be able to integrate this into one of their existing products. Uh, very briefly, how did we get there in 12 months? Well, it wasn't easy, but it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Because a lot of AI development is becoming increasingly productized, and there are frameworks and libraries out there that will do all the heavy lifting for you. Uh, we started off with something called Fast AI, which is quite a good place to start off simply because they've got huge store of uh, online training material. So that was really good for us to sort of learn the basics of AI. But unfortunately, it's got quite poor support for embedded devices. So we then moved on to something called TensorFlow. You may also have heard of something called Kiras. The two have been merged together in the most recent updates. Um, it requires more exper experience to use, but it's got really good support for embedded devices. So a lot of microcontroller uh, manufacturers provide things like code generators that will take the output of TensorFlow model and automatically generate code to get that onto the microcontroller. Something else we looked at more recently is Edge Impulse, which is very easy to use. It's an online system and it's aimed at producing embedded systems. Uh, it's a bit trickier to do some of the more advanced things with it, but what it does, it does extremely well. And if you wanted to get started with HAI, I would recommend that you take a look at that. And finally, if you're completely new to AI and you fancy just having a play with something, try Googling the Teachable Machine. This is something I used for an introduction in the AI course we've been doing, and it's very simple. It's the sort of thing you could point your kids at on a rainy afternoon and have a little bit of fun with uh, sort of face 
recognition or gesture recognition. It does all sorts of things. Okay, I think I'm out of time. Thank you for listening. Uh, do we have any questions? I think before questions, it's time for a round of applause. Yep, it's working. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd left it switched off. Um, Brian, I've got a quick question after our round of applause. Um, when you're creating your data sets, you've got your data set and it's analyzing internal sounds for a device of some sort. Do you have any procedures or code in place that prevents external sounds being picked up as internal sounds? Or is that so easy to dis uh, distinguish between them that you don't need to? Uh, we haven't got any specific filtering, but what we do is we often add background sounds to the AI training and say, this is a please ignore it category or a background sound category. Um, we would also put in things like sound, cat like, like uh, silence category, so that it recognizes background hum from the microphone. So it can then distinguish sounds distinct from the background sound a lot more easily. Okay, so it's, it's part of the teaching the algorithm what sounds are relevant rather than yeah. uh, active filtering at the time. Okay, I guess that's that's the benefit of using AI is that you can, or machine learning, so that you can do that. Um, I've got a, a question, and this is a personal question because it's something I've wanted to do for ages. Um, I've got a flock of rooks and a flock of jackdaws that come to my house. Now, I know you can teach rooks to talk. Um, out of the four options that you presented, which one do you think would be best to put on a Raspberry Pi so that every time it sees a rook, it says something to them so that they pick it up. Any recommendations? Um, well, any of them would do. Um, probably the place to start would be the teachable machine, just to have a little play around and get the hang of um, getting some data into a system and getting it to recognize things. Um, but then when you wanted to actually turn that into a product, then Edge Impulse is probably the next place you would go and feed your data into that. Okay, so t teachable machines and then Edge AI. Um, I'm not interested in turning it into a product, I just want to terrorize the entire village with a flock of, <laughs> flock of rooks. Um, we're fast approaching the end of the time, so I'll take this opportunity to say thank you, Nigel, for that excellent talk. It was a very interesting uh, breakdown of quite an interesting product. I remember seeing the YouTube video when it first came out, um, exciting stuff. For anybody watching along, all 39 of you, um, this will be the last you see of me. I will be handing you back over to Nikki and James for the final session when you will get to find out about that 10K fund, up to 10K fund, uh, for using um, the data centers down at Goonhilly as well as some other few things. Nigel, lastly and finally, a huge thank you for joining us. And once again, a little round of applause from me and everybody watching along at home. Thanks, Tony. And to everyone watching along, I'll see you in the next session.